servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name, the name all victorious of Jesus extol. His kingdom is glorious and rules over all. Ascended on high, almighty to save, yet still he is nigh, his presence we have. The great congregation his triumph shall sing, ascribing salvation to Jesus our King. Salvation to God who sits on the throne, let all cry aloud and honor the Son. The praises of Jesus the angels proclaim, fall down on their faces and worship the Lamb. Then let us adore and give him his right, all glory and power and wisdom and might, all honor and blessing with angels above, and thanks never ceasing and infinite The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Rejoicing in Christ's victory over sin and death, let us come before God who calls us to repentance. God of life, by the resurrection of your Son, you make everything new. Newness scares us, and we confess to shutting our doors in fear. We have not listened to voices that challenge us. We have resisted the Holy Spirit, moving us in new directions. Our hearts are slow to believe your promises. Forgive us, O God, and renew us to embrace without fear the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, Christ is alive and death has lost its power. Through the waters of baptism, you have been born anew by the living word of God. Know that your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name and that the spirit of the risen Christ is alive in both, both now and and forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. us free to be people of God, power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Bless 
blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end, bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. The first lesson for today comes from the book of Acts, the first chapter. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who you have been taken up, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. God has gone up with a shout. God has gone up with a shout. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a joyful sound. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, a great King over all the earth, who subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet who chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom God loves. God has gone up with a shout. God 
God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations. God is enthroned on high. The nobles of the peoples have gathered as the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God who is highly exalted. God has gone up with a shout. The second lesson for today comes from the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the wor working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written. It just dawned on me. Forgive me, I thought I had the wrong page. Let me, let me, let me find where I was. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, 
and they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And before I go any further, my sincere thanks to Pastor Wayne Haight for leading worship with us this morning. It's always a pleasure to have Wayne with us in worship, and I'm very grateful to him for this morning, brother. A touching story is told about a soon-to-be 10-year-old girl in Minnesota. Her mom had sent out party invitations to a dozen of her classmates, inviting them to her birthday party. But all she got back was silence and sorries. The little girl has learning difficulties. School is a struggle. Being different is not always good, especially at that age. And she spends most of her playtime on the playground alone. Well, the thought of no one showing up for her daughter's birthday party was too much for her mom to bear. And so she turned to social media, posting, I'm reaching out to moms who have daughters between the ages of 9 and 11 who might like to come to a birthday party at the park this Saturday from 11 to 1. You don't have to bring any gifts or stay long. Just stop by and wish my daughter a happy birthday. And what happened next was wonderful. The posting went viral, as they say. And 36 hours later, mom and daughter stood at the center of a birthday party with about 300 guests. A park shelter with tables and chairs had been provided by a local business. Hundreds of cupcakes were provided by local bakeries. Several food trucks were on hand. And guests included included police officers, firemen and women, and of course, city officials. The guests, most of them strangers to the little girl, did bring cards, flowers, and presents. And if I might add a theological touch, I really think for one afternoon we might say the world got a glimpse of the kingdom of God. Where the last shall be first, the weak are made strong, those without have their needs provided for, and the lonely are no longer alone. I would guess that by two o'clock that afternoon, mom and daughter might have just been standing there looking around awestruck, wondering a little bit like the disciples on that ascension day. And maybe again, two strangers in white robes appeared and said something like this, ladies, why do you stand here looking up and around Something wonderful has just happened. Jesus began his ministry by proclaiming the good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. And by the way that he lived and died, he went on to inaugurate a new order, the new reign of God's love, and what changes he sought to make. In the old order of the world, the powerful would step on the powerless to rise higher. But in the kingdom of God, the powerful will serve the powerless, with God even washing feet. In the old order, the hungry are blamed for their poverty, outcasts are ignored, the sick are forgotten, and sinners are shunned. But in the kingdom of God, the hungry are fed, outcasts are embraced, the sick are healed, and sinners are forgiven and restored to wholeness. In the old order, God is far off and often forgotten altogether. But in the kingdom of God, 
the creator lives among the created. In the old order, death has the final word, but in the kingdom of God, death is merely turning a page and moving on to a new story. Just like the birthday party, in the kingdom of God, the last are first. The weak are made strong, those without have their needs provided for, and the lonely are no longer alone. In the crucified and resurrected Lord, Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God not only begins, but it will never end. As the angelic creatures promise the disciples, he will come again as certainly and mysteriously as he left. But you still don't get to know when. Timing is the Father's business. Prior to his ascending into heaven in our first lesson this morning, the disciples had asked Jesus if this was when he was going to restore the kingdom of Israel, which I'm sure among their many wishes included wiping out the Roman Empire. I love his answer when he basically says, it's not about what I'm going to do, it's what God is going to do through you. The kingdom doesn't end when Jesus returns home to his father. It continues through disciples like them and like you and me. I'm sure the disciples had a hard time understanding that because we still do 2,000 years later. Would the God of all creation really entrust that mission to reveal his kingdom to ordinary people like us? And yet that is exactly what Jesus is saying to us. We are not just meant to be spectators, standing in the mountainside, looking up, and maybe even kindly and honestly asking, in Scotty McCreary's words, how you doing up there? We are not just supposed to watch everything that God does. We are called in so many ways to be participants, actors, players in the divine drama of God's work in our world. Our Heavenly Father is counting on us to be witnesses to his glory. Time and again, every day of our lives, through our witness, through our service, and through our best efforts to be the reincarnated Jesus, we may be the only presence of God that someone else sees in their life today. Almost everything we say and do is witnessed by someone, family, friends, strangers, colleagues, and that witnessing includes everything that we post on social media, too. The question is not, will we be witnesses? The real question is, what kind of witness will we be? Will we bear witness to the old world order of power, judgment, anger, and division as we so painfully envision in today's political world? Or will we witness to the new world order, God's kingdom of love, grace, forgiveness, and servanthood? Pastor Dean Luking writes, not only is the ascension Jesus triumphant in his homecoming to the honor and glory of the Father whom he loves, but he brings our destiny with him. He brings the whole battered, redeemed family of humanity with him in his ascension. We are not left out, abandoned to struggle on without him. When he says, lo, I am with you always, 
he means just that. He is with us now to bring us ever upward to where he has gone. He meets us at our level and takes us toward where he wants us to be and are destined to arrive at last. But meanwhile, we are on the move, gathering, growing, and going. We must not stand still in our faith and discipleship. We must grow and continue to do so. His ascension means he takes us with him day by day through good times and bad, in joy and in sorrow, success and failure, hope and disillusionment. End of quote. In a world of desperate need, there is good news. We are never alone in our witnessing journeys. As Jesus ascends into heaven, the disciples are not left behind, as if God was punishing them. Instead, they are left behind to move forward, to bear witness to his resurrection power. As we proclaim it every Sunday during the Easter season, he is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia, Yes, and reveal ultimately the kingdom of God. Nor have we been left alone on our journey. We have been given and are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Scripture tells us that the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is the power that is at work within us now through the Holy Spirit. We are called to be witnesses, but it is always the power of God that uses our witness to impact the life of others. Take a moment, just a few seconds, to think about whose words or actions have inspired you to deeper faithfulness. Whose words or actions revealed to you over the years the love, grace, and forgiveness of God? And I'm going to pause for just a few seconds as you think of those precious people. In our opening story, the Spirit of God moved hundreds of people to witness at a little girl's birthday party and perhaps unknowingly reflect the kingdom of God as well. Where the last shall be first, the weak are made strong, those without will have their needs provided for, and the lonely are no longer alone. The world is full of such people in need of God's good news. So who will bear witness to them? Who will reveal to them the kingdom of God? That privilege belongs to us. May God's Holy Spirit guide and direct us accordingly as the angelic visitors ask, you Galileans, why do you just stand here looking up at an empty sky? There's work to be done. Go with God and do it. Amen.
rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Our Savior Jesus reigns, the God of truth and love. When he had purged our stains, he took his seat above. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail, he rules o'er earth and heaven. The keys of death and hell are to our Jesus given. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. He sits at God's right hand till all his foes submit and bow to his command and fall beneath his feet. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. On this festival Sunday, we use the words of the Nicene Creed to confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Ever-present God, root your church fir firmly in you. Let us neither become entranced, staring up into the heavens, nor distraught by the suffering of the world. Teach us to see you in every face, every place, and every moment. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the cosmos, you cradle creation in your loving arms, 
and anoint it with signs of your presence. In the budding of flowers, the birth of a baby, and the formations of the land and sky, reveal your abundant life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, your reign is above us, around us, beneath us, and besides us. As you rule the cosmos with justice and mercy, pour out your spirit upon those in authority that they serve humbly and justly. Hear us, O God. God of companionship, provide clarity and direction for those experiencing life transitions in births and deaths, new employment and new relationships, divorces and departures. We pray for those receiving new diagnoses or undergoing treatment for illness or injury, especially those whom we hold in our heart and speak their names silently now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Imminent God, in you we live, move, and have our being. Draw us closer to you and clothe us in your power. Encourage those preparing for baptism, those affirming their baptism, and all who are assuming new roles in this congregation's ministries. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. God of welcome, you call us to feast at your eternal banquet. We give thanks for those who came before us, whose lives witnessed to your love. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. You may be seated. To all who are here in the sanctuary and those who are online, live with us, we welcome you. We've been expecting you. We've been greeting and we greet you in Christ's name. We ask that you would pay attention to the announcements about the Vacation Bible School needs. Registration forms are in the gathering place over here. Also, volunteer forms and supply donation cards are there as well. And many volunteers are still needed, so would you please respond. The newsletter for this week and next is available also at both entrances, uh, and we, we ask that you pay attention to those informations that affect your calendar and uh, your life for the next weeks or so. Also, we're in that election time of the year in which we are called upon to vote for our church council officers. By May the 31st, that is to be done. There are ballot boxes at each of the doors. Uh, and, and if you'd like to send them through the mail, please send them to the church office or put it in the offering plate. A personal note. Again, thanking Denny and the pastors for asking me to be here. It doesn't happen much that I serve anymore in this capacity. But this is a special day in that it is a white Sunday. You can tell that by the pyramids. Um, I will be wearing this morning in respect and honor to the quilters group in a congregation that I serve in Edmore in, in, in Michigan, a chasuble that has been created by them, quilted, handmade. Its basis is white for celebration. Because I don't get to wear it very often, and I do today, I'm going to put it on as we uh, celebrate Holy Communion, our acknowledgement to the people of our Savior's Lutheran Church, the quilters uh, in Edmore, Michigan. With that, we receive our offerings and look forward to the offertory. <laughs> Come away to the skies, may beloved arise and rejoice in the day you were born. On this festival day, come exulting away 
and with singing to Zion return. Now with singing and praise let us spend all the days by our Heavenly Father bestowed. While God's grace we receive from his bounty and live to the honor and glory of God. For the glory we were first created to share both the nature and kingdom divine now created again that our lives may remain throughout time and eternity thine. Hallelujah, we sing to our God and King and his rapturous praises repeat. To the Lamb that was slain, hallelujah again, sing all heaven and fall at his feet. On this festival day, come exalting our way, and with singing to Zion return and with singing to Zion return. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This, cup, th this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new blood in my covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. before us, uh, come before the altar this, this morning, that you will receive the uh, wafer, the bread, the wine, uh, and you may stand or kneel at the communion railing. Or if you would like the grape juice and gluten-free wafer, they are in the little chalices up here. Just make that known to us, and we will be sure that you have that. Whether, wherever you are doing that, here or online, please remember that as it is offered, we do receive the actual body and blood of Jesus Christ in the bread and the wine that is here. All is now ready. Let us commune.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Remember that Jesus said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face, upon, face shine upon you and be grac with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. my 
soul. It is well, it is well.